right. What's going on everyone? In this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Teferi Timeless Voyager Planeswalker deck. As always do keep in mind this is not intended to be a tier 1 competitive deck. If you want that consider checking out the latest tournament results. What we'll be doing is upgrading this deck card by card, sticking to this deck's theme, and doing it on a budget as we will not exceed the retail price of the deck with our upgrade. So the Teferi Timeless Voyager Planeswalker deck cares about drawing cards and and casting spells. It has things like Fairy Vandal, Mystic Skyfish, and Tefiri's Ageless Insight that all get more powerful if we can draw more cards. The Fairy gets a counter, the Skyfish will get flying, and the enchantment allows us to draw extra cards. Then it has draw enablers like Opt, Frantic Inventory, and Historian of Zalfir, which all just help us draw extra cards. The idea is get a payoff for drawing cards, then draw cards. Pretty simple. It also has a bunch of prowess cards like Stormwing Entity, Jeskai Outers, and Shipwreck Dowser. And it's kind of weird because the deck does seem to want to cast spells, but there are only 10 instants and sorcerers in the deck. So even though there's some overlap between casting spells and drawing cards, there's lots of cards that just don't synergize with each other. Like for example, the Stormwing Entity wants us to play a spell so we can play it and also play spells to trigger prowess but then the historian draws cards which we do want to draw cards but it doesn't trigger the entity right so we have these cast spells cards and then we have these draw cards cards and there's some overlap like with opt which draws cards and as a spell but we want stuff that triggers both right like i don't want to have a historian of zolfir in play and then have a stormwing entity stuck in hand because i didn't cast a spell so we're going to focus on casting spells we're going to focus on drawing cards but we're going to make sure that these two strategies overlap better so first off we're going to take out two home animas for two stormwing entities the problem with the home anima is well, it's just not that great. It's, it is a 4 mana 3 3 that can be unblockable, but it's just, uh, you know, it's not that exciting. And the Stormwing Entity is kind of insane. It's actually seeing some play in competitive decks, usually blue red decks with like Arc Light Phoenix and Sprite Dragon thing. There's a blue red spells deck, and the Stormwing Entity is pretty crazy in it. Usually it's a 2 mana 3 3 with flying, prowess, and it lets you scry. Tome Anima, on the other hand, is just a little clunky. I mean, it is a 3 3 that'll be unblockable sometimes but it's a four mana three three i don't know it's just not that exciting so i think storming entity is really good i think it's a fine replacement we just need to change the ratios in this deck a little bit make sure we can cast it more reliably for two mana and we'll do that a little bit later next we're going to take out one mystic skyfish for one nadir kraken in this case i just think the kraken is a better payoff for drawing cards than the skyfish i mean they're both three mana creatures but the kraken every time we draw a card we get to pay one and we get to create a token and the kraken will get a plus one plus one counter and remember the kraken only cares about drawing not just drawing our second card so it'll work when we draw our card for our turn so the kraken can get huge and it goes super wide and i just think that's a better payoff than the skyfish which is a three mana three one has flying sometimes i mean we could play a three mana three power flyer that doesn't care about drawing or we could play i don't know we could play what's the three mana two one that draws a card that's probably better just because that's flying all the time technically it has one less power but i think having flying every single turn is probably going to add up to more damage i don't know it's not that exciting i don't really like the skyfish nadir kraken is spicy and fun i think it's just a better payoff next i want to take out one jeskai outer for one fairy vandal i just think the vandal is a better payoff it's the same cost it's the same size but it has flying and it gets a permanent plus one plus one counter instead of just plus one plus one for the turn like the outers jeskai outer is better in a like straight spell slinging deck right like if you put jeskai outers in a deck with shocks and you know just lots of burn spells and stuff jeskai outers is pretty crazy it kind of reminds me of like a really bad monastery swift spear if you're familiar with that monastery swift spear very good card in modern jeskai outers is like a bad version of it but like they're comparable but the problem is we're not a burn deck we're not slinging burn spells we're not killing off blockers so i just think permanent plus one plus one counter on the vandal makes a lot more sense in this deck now we need to put more card draw in this deck we do not have nearly enough card draw so let's take out mantle of tides for an opt the mantle is not a good payoff for drawing cards i mean 
all we get, our reward for drawing extra cards, is we get to move the equipment. Not that exciting. So, we're going to replace it with a card that just lets us draw cards, and it's going to make all the cards in the rest of our deck better. You know, it's going to put a counter on Fairy Vandal. It's going to allow us to cast Stormwing Entity for two mana. It can put a counter on the Kraken. You know, it's going to do so much. And this mantle, you know, we can move it, I guess. So, yeah, just, it's the worst payoff in the deck. It's kind of pointless. We're going to go with Opt. Makes a lot more sense. For the same reason, we're going to replace the other Mantle of Tides for a Glimpse of Freedom. Now, Glimpse of Freedom is a much, much worse card draw spell than Opt. Two mana draw a card, we don't get the Scry. Much worse. But it has Escape, so it gives us a repeatable way to draw cards throughout the game. So if we have Fairy Vandals in play, for example, and we're empty-handed, we can just keep escaping the Glimpse of Freedom to get counters and stuff, right? So the fact that, yeah, sure, two mana draw a card, terrible, but once it's in our graveyard, we just have an infinite, so not infinite, because we need cards in our graveyard, but we have a source of card draw throughout the entire game. And remember, it's going to draw us cards. We're not just using it to trigger Fairy Vandal. We're drawing cards, so we're going to draw more card draw spells. So it's nice to have in the graveyard. I think a single copy in the deck is fine. Definitely better than Mantle of Tides, which doesn't really do much. We're also going to take out the other Jeskai Elder for one radical idea. So the big problem with this deck, as I've been saying, just not enough card draw spells. And Jeskai Elders, I, I still think it's okay in blue-red, but not in mono blue so cutting off this kind of mediocre payoff for just an extra card draw spell is something that we need to do to make this deck more consistent and radical idea is pretty good because we get to cast it twice we can cast it and then we get the jump start so we're only adding one spell to the deck one card to the deck but we're basically adding two instances of card draw because we can cast it and then we can recast it pretty good and then next up we're going to take out a mystic skyfish for a code of constraint so once again as i've been saying we need less payoffs more draw spells and i just don't think the skyfish is that great so being able to tap a creature down for a turn and also draw a card is just something that this deck really needs and it's going to work well with the card that's coming up but either way just adding more card draw spells pretty important and this one's not bad just because the danger of having too many card draw spells is getting flooded with them and then just getting steamrolled by an aggro deck but in this case at least we get to tap down a creature for a turn so it draws us a card it also stalls a little bit yeah it's pretty good i like it and then next up we're going to take out two mystic sky fishes for two gadwick the wizened and this kind of gives us a weird kind of tempo we feel because this along with the last card is going to allow us to keep our opponent's stuff tapped so gadwick is a three mana creature like the skyfish but he allows us to pay x when we cast him to draw x cards that's a lot of card draw especially when a lot of our cards are going to allow us to draw even more cards so gadwick is great so on turn three Mm, not that great compared to the skyfish i mean it's a 3-3 instead of a 3-1 but beyond that not that exciting but afterwards it gets better and better and it's really really good in the late game but even if we did play it on turn three as just a three mana 3-3 whenever we cast a blue spell we get to tap something and that's really good because we're going to be churning through cards as we sling our card draw spells so being able to tap blockers so we can attack for the win is pretty great and also if we're on the defensive, being able to cast instant speed draw spells on the opponent's turn and tap down attackers, also really good. So Gadwick is pretty great. I don't like him in too high numbers. I'm only going to be playing two. I think two is fine. But between Gadwick tapping down stuff, we have Code of Constraint. We also have some bounce spells. I think we have enough tempo-y stuff that we can kind of survive, which might be necessary with the amount of just kind of do-nothing draw spells that we're getting in this deck. So it seems pretty decent. I really like it. I also want to take out two of the Historians for two Sphinx of Foresight. So Sphinx of Foresight doesn't technically let us draw. So four mana, four, four lets us scry every turn. It also lets us scry at the beginning of the game if it's in our opening hand. But the Historians are just so unreliable. Yes, technically, in the ideal scenario, the Historians can draw us a card every turn, but how often is that really going to happen? So in light of the fact that it's probably not going to draw us that many cards anyway, I personally like the Sphinx because it's just a straight up game winner. It's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flyer. It's amazing. It lets us scry every single turn, which is also great. So it does kind of help us draw because even though it's not drawing itself, it's going to allow us to dig for draw spells. Or if we have too many draw spells, it'll will allow us to dig for payoffs. It'll allow us to dig for those Krakens and those fairy vandals and all that stuff. So I really like it much, much better than a four mana three three that might let us draw sometimes. And then finally, I'm going to take out one island for one more radical idea. 
these decks usually have too many lands and I think 24 is more than enough for us considering the fact that we're drawing so much so we should be able to draw into lands if we're light on them so I think it's fine seems totally okay to me and that's it though there are still a few cards that I think are worth noting first and foremost are the Eldraine lands one or two copies of Castle Vatris would be pretty great in this deck because it's a free scry outlet I mean our entire mana base is basic lands it shouldn't ever come into play tapped and you know four mana to scry two is a lot but it's a free scry just for adding a land to the deck so it's, it's fine mystic sanctuary is also actually not that bad here when we play it if we have a bunch of islands we can put a draw spell from our graveyard onto the top of our library so we're guaranteed to draw on the following turn so honestly i think these are both pretty great i think one to two copies each would be fine but that's kind of optional not 100 necessary i also want to note ghostly pilferer this one's kind of interesting I, I think it's pretty good in this deck i just couldn't find room for it so it's a two mana two one and it can draw a card whenever it untaps when it untaps we can pay two draw a card more importantly it draws whenever the opponent plays a spell from anywhere other than their hand and there's actually a lot of that going on in standard at the moment like with escape creatures uro if your opponent escapes an uro you get to draw a card um adventure creatures if your opponent plays bone crusher giant or murderous rider you get to draw a card uh light up the stage as well as well as what's the team or adventure card the 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 this one it's on screen i can't think of the name at the moment but both of these allow the opponent to cast cards from exile which is not from their hand so there is a lot of this right there's a lot of people casting things from outside of their hand be it from their graveyard or from the exile zone so I actually think ghostly pilfer is pretty sweet it can also discard cards from your hand to get unblockable which sounds bad but you discard a card it gets unblockable you attack with it the next turn you get to draw a card it's like a really slow looting effect right like it, it's going to take a while but you get to discard a card and then draw a card it's just you have to discard now attack for two and then you'll get to draw next turn so it seems okay um another great card that i couldn't fit is magic mirror it's just ah oh, man there's just so many good draw payoffs and magic mirror is pretty great maybe it's worth squeezing one into the deck somehow i don't know the planeswalker package is pretty bad right the fury is not the most exciting planeswalker but I don't know it's it's <sighs> magic mirror seems fun it seems janky but it seems fun maybe one copy would be cool but I don't know just worth noting I guess oh uh, there's also terramander uh, there's so many good payoffs there's so many good draw payoffs technically terramander doesn't care about drawing but as we cast our draw spells we can use the adapt ability to make it a 5-5 five, five flyer it's pretty great very powerful kind of underplayed people aren't really playing terramander anymore but terramander is pretty decent but uh, man we just don't have room for all this cool stuff it's annoying but the point is I think where we're at now I think it's pretty good I think we're much better than where we started it's diverse but it's also much more consistent the payoffs should trigger more consistently you know we have better payoffs we have more ways to draw cards and we also have cards like sphinx of foresight that can just straight up win games by themselves so i'm pretty happy with this the deck will probably feel very different each game but also it should feel much more consistent and much more powerful each game because we're not playing with you know mystic skyfish so yeah i think it's pretty cool i think also there's lots of open-endedness with this so there's lots of room for like experimentation and customization so i would definitely encourage people to do that if you want to try different things if you like nadir kraken and you would rather have more of those than stormwing entity i think that's totally fine there's just so many cool payoffs there's even cards like spectral sailor like you could play spectral sailor terramander and then you could play more of the the gust of winds like that'd be really cool right you have eight one drops that have flying gust of wind's gonna cost two it's gonna bounce a creature draw a card and then with enough card draw terramander becomes a five five spectral sailor allows us to draw more with fairy vandal right so you have like spectral sailor terramander fairy vandal and that's like a much more aggressive like aggro flying card draw thing like it seems okay right like there's a lot there's a lot of different ways you could build the stack alternatively you could go nadir krakens maybe more controlling spells like the counter spells that draw cards and you know play like a more controlling card draw deck like fairy vandal nadir kraken maybe magic mirror in that deck for sure like there's so many ways you could build a blue like card draw matters deck so yeah i would definitely encourage people to just try things if you want because i think there's a lot of different variants of this deck that we could build but regardless what we have now i think is still much much better than what we started with and also it's very cheap so i'm pretty happy with this deck regardless 
of you know how many variants we could play but uh yep yeah, if you like this video and want to see more like it i have an entire playlist dedicated to these planeswalker decks and you can find a link to it in the description below you'll also find my amazon affiliate link which you can use to support this channel if you wish though i do encourage you to buy magic products at your local game store and not amazon but if you do order anything on amazon after clicking that link it gives me a small kickback and i appreciate it but in the meantime thanks for watching everyone i hope this video was helpful and i will see you in the next one